I've worked with the homeless for 24 years since I helped found the Sharon Community Shelter back in 1983. And then in 1989, we carried the three coffins to the county office building that led to the creation of the safety net shelter system that the county is now dismantling. And for 18 years, I've worked closely with the county, and it's filled with bright people who are working to come up with better solutions. And they're on the brink of actually being able to solve street homelessness to an extent never before possible. They've identified about 130 chronically homeless people. They figured out what their disabilities are, what they might be eligible for. They have new outreach now coming from the VA to veterans, from, ment uh, from mental health to the mentally ill. They have new outreach starting for substance abusers. And we have about 90 units of permanent supportive housing coming on. Within a year, we could offer permanent housing to two-thirds or more of the chronically homeless people in all of Westchester County. And we should all be proud of that. Except something happened in August. In August, Westchester County lost its mind. In August, Westchester decided that the way to help the homeless would be to take away their beds. And we chose this spot because this is such a beautiful place in White Plains and it's proud of its skyline. Look at that, isn't that cool? The biggest skyline, they say, between Manhattan and Albany. And White Plains should be proud of its restaurants, its public spaces, its million dollar apartments. But it should not be ashamed that there are dozens of people tonight who are sleeping on the streets, who are hiding in parking garages and gar alleyways, who are sleeping in boxes like that. We can't, let Westchester, we can't let Westchester and White Plains make that the housing for the rich and a box like that the housing for the poor. What you should do we should all remember Adriana. Adriana was the woman that was interviewed by the New York Times who was sleeping on the streets of White Plains. And she was 43 and she had cancer and it wasn't getting treatment. She wasn't sure what kind, she just knew if you touched her legs, they would start to bleed. And the White Plains police found her with a box inside the parking garage at the Westchester, the beautiful Westchester. And when the police found this poor woman, the city of White Plains, all they had to offer her was a summons. A summons for trespass. What we need to summon is some common decency. What we need to summon is some common sense. And common decency and common sense have suddenly become in short supply in Westchester County. What instead we have is foolishness and falsehoods. And the prime example of foolishness is the county's new homeless sleep deprivation policy. And boy, they hate when you call it that. They go, oh no, that's not what it is. But it is. And the reason they feel foolish when you call it that is because it's a foolish plan. And if someone asks the county executive, you sir, why do you support Westchester's new homeless sleep deprivation policy? Just ask them that question because there is no rational answer except to deny that that's what it is. And they try to cover that foolishness with a series of falsehoods. And as of midnight last night, I was aware of at least six different falsehoods the county's used to try to justify this foolishness. The first was that it was for the homeless people's own good. That if we just made them suffer a little more, if we just made their lives a little bit harder, then they would do what we tell them to do. Then they would keep their appointments and have their documents and turn over their checks and do anything else that we thought of. Then they'd be able to walk 10 miles to an appointment in the rain and make it back on time. If we only made them a little more uncomfortable. But you know what? When you take away someone's bed, that doesn't help them get their life together. What it does, and I know this because I'm a grant writer, I push the envelope, I go so far <laughs> further than a rational person would normally go. And what happens after a day or two of not having sleep is you get forgetful, you get irritable, you get reckless. In fact, the science section of the Times this week was all about sleep and sleep deprivation. And it talked about how there were all these long-term effects that you actually became were at higher risk for diabetes if you weren't, didn't get enough sleep. The county's plan is to take away the, the beds and give chairs. So picture what would happen when you tried to sleep in a chair for a night, for a week, for a month. Picture your mother. Picture your mother trying to sleep in a chair for a week, for a month, for a winter. You know what happens? 
They get irritable, reckless, forgetful. You start to stumble. You fall asleep. You nod off. And scientists say that after a week or two, a normal person will start to hallucinate if they're deprived of sleep. So think of it. This county has suddenly adopted a policy that what we need to do for the frailest, the poorest, the most isolated of our homeless is that we need to do something by taking away their sleep and putting them out in the streets, reckless, irritable, forgetful, and hallucinating, and put them on the streets of our major cities to find a place to hide, to sleep, and to urinate. Makes no sense. It's foolish. They start to, they're beginning to get very embarrassed about this because as we talk about it, they realize how foolish it is. So the, another falsehood they came up with is, oh, we want them to sleep. Of course we want them to sleep. I mean, we're reasonable people. We just want to take away their beds. And I ask you, if you want someone to sleep, if you're an honest man who wants somebody to sleep, do you take away their beds? The answer is no. The third falsehood is they started to say, well, you know, we didn't say it had to be a folding chair. We didn't say what kind of chair it could be. It could be a lazy boy recliner. So you could spend $1,000 on a lazy boy recliner, but you can't spend $20 on a cot. That's crazy. We want to help the homeless. We don't want to waste taxpayers' money. That's too stupid for words. And most of the, the people who work for DSS are bright and light people who've spent a career trying to help the poor and the homeless, and they're embarrassed. So what some of them have said privately is we'll do a sort of a don't ask, don't tell. So we'll tell you you can't have beds. We'll tell you that you can't use beds even if you have a stack 10 feet high in the next room. But then we'll go away and you can sneak in the beds. Just don't tell us. Because we have to pretend that we're being tough on the homeless. Why do we have to do that? Where I come from, you don't show you're tough by hurting the old, the disabled, and the sick. Then last night, they were circulating a piece of paper with no name or header on it that said, oh no, this isn't true. This is just a rumor. These are the crazy people like Carl Bertrand saying that the county's taking away their bids. But you know, there's a dozen people here who've heard it from the county's own lips. And the county has been saying it for weeks and weeks in multiple settings with multiple groups to dozens of people that they want to take away the beds, and they're doing it for their own good. And the last, the last falsehood is a piece of paper that we saw last night said, oh, the devil made us do it. Actually, Mayor Delfino made us do it. It said, we would love to have cots. We're good people. We're rational people. We would love to have cots in the warming centers. It's just Mayor Delfino won't let us do that. But you know that's been justifying this policy. It's been county employees who've been going and telling everyone they have to take away the beds. It's county employees who've been justifying it. And the most telling thing is that they've been saying it to about every warming center in every city in Westchester. And I ask you, since when has Mayor Delfino and the White Plains Common Council been able to dictate policy for Westchester County and every major city in the county? The answer is never. This is the county's own idea. But homeless sleep deprivation is just one of the cruel decisions the county made in August. It closed 43 safety net shelter beds that were at 85 Court Street. But that week, there had been 134 people sleeping in safety net shelter beds. There were about 40 down at the Sharon Community in Yonkers. There were 43 there. And then there were about 40 that were scattered through shelters in every major city in Westchester County. Because they had a policy that if, you, if someone needed shelter at night, and the safety net shelters were full, and there was an empty bed in another shelter, they would let that shelter meet that need. The county decided that when they closed those 43 beds, they'd prohibit the shelters from making their empty beds available. So instead of just cutting out 43 beds, they cut out over 80. It was as if they decided, well, we're at it. let's just double the pain. And I think they did it because they thought that no one would notice and no one would care. But we have noticed, and we're here because we care.